Hello, my name is Joseph Richberg, Senior Data Architect at PenguinRandomHouse.com. Today I'm going to show you how you can pass parameters into an Azure Data Factory pipeline from an Azure Logic app. Uh, we do this quite often as we get files from various vendors and while the file structure stays the same, many of them change the file name based upon dates. So in that case, the file isn't the same all the time, and we have to pull it from the source and convert it so that the data factory, the pipeline in specific, can see the file. Because when you create your pipelines, you have a source, which is a set file name, and a destination, which is a set table or file name. So to solve that, we use the Logic App to go and retrieve the file from the location, be it FTP, uh, be it email, be it uh, on internal file system, determine what the name is and rename it if necessary, upload it to our Azure blob storage, and then pass that into the pipeline. This gives us a little more flexibility and we find it to be incredibly powerful. So let me show you how it's done. You go into your data pipeline and in the main tab, if you click here in the pipeline, you'll see four tabs and you go to parameters and you put the parameter names you want. So in this case, we only need two. One is a file name and I have base ID. One of the other uh, very nice things about parameters is you can drive other objects. In this case, the base ID actually drives our store procedure. Uh, in this situation, this specific pipeline, we have two different files with the exact same file structure, but the table and the resultant application needs to know what type of data. So one is a quote unquote management view of data. The other is the legal view of data. And that information isn't provided in the files themselves. It's basically the inherent property of the file, right? So we'll get file A and file A is always management. File B is always legal, but embedded in the file, I don't know. So we have to pass additional information into the pipeline to let it know, and we do that with parameters. So first, let me show you how to connect your copy function or activity. So if I click on my copy, normally you would do a new data set. So in this case, we'll do edit because it already exists, and you go to connection. Now here, I had a file set up. You would go here, you would do preview, you would browse and preview data, set up everything determine if you have first row header, etc. Once that's done, normally you would think, oh, I'll add content here. And that was the old way. So if I do add dynamic content, you'll notice it doesn't show me any of my parameters. And the reason is I'm actually one step in. I'm at the data set level. And the parameter from your data pipeline comes above, right? It's above the connection level. This is the connection. It goes one level higher in the source, right? So you think of at the very bottom, you have your data set. Then one level above, you have your data source. So I'm now in the data source. And as you notice, as you mouse over things, it's always add dynamic content. And that is where you're going to make a connection, connect the dots, so to speak. In our situation, the file directory stays the same. So the Logic App moves the file from wherever it's collecting it to a specific folder in a specific location in Azure. So we need wildcard file name. Now, you could type something in by hand, like if you always knew that a file was dropped, it was always a text file, and the only thing in this directory was that text file, you could do asterisk.txt, and then you don't care what the name is as long as the structure is the same. But that means you would have to constantly clean out your directory, right? So you load up one or more files, you run your pipeline, then you go back to your Logic App and have to clean that out. And I find that to be somewhat of a pain. That's a lot of extra work. So what we do here is that directory can actually keep history. We go to add content, dynamic, and at the very bottom, your parameters are available. So I'll select file name. 
and it nicely populates for you the proper syntax to extract the file name parameter from the pipeline. Hit finish. So now what's going to happen is when this pipeline is called, it's going to expect two parameters. The file name parameter will be stuck here in this. And that tells the pipeline, go to this directory, this subdirectory, oh, and substitute that file name. And that's it. Whatever I passed in, it will assume is in the proper directory. Now, after that runs properly, I go to my store procedure. And it works the same way. In this case, I have a store procedure in a, a, a hyperscale database in Azure. When I do import parameters, the pipeline is aware of any import parameters on the store procedure. Now, I made sure the name of the input parameter was the same as the name of the parameter being passed in. Makes life easy. I can just connect them. I don't have to go back to my notes and say, the base ID and the parameter is actually this parameter name, etc. So let me go back here again. And the same thing happens. Now, in this case, it's, since it was already created, I have it. But if I were to delete it, this is what you would see. So you click on inside value, add dynamic content, scroll to the bottom, and there it is, base. So now, when I pass in the parameter from the Logic App, this store procedure will use that parameter. Now, the reason for this is we have two files that come in from another system. The names are different but the structure is the same. The names are different because they're two different versions of the data, um, and these two different versions are needed for the application. But the data inside doesn't tell the difference. There's no column that says this is version A and this is version B data. The system simply says file A is version A, file B is version B. And as uh, you know, or if not, I can do a tutorial. You cannot add columns into a copy data. So I can't inject any information. So to get around this, the Logic App goes through, looks at the file name, makes the determination as to is it A or B, and then passes the appropriate base ID number. In. So when this store procedure runs, it gets information from the Logic App and knows the appropriate piece. Hopefully that makes sense. So now I have both pieces of information, one from the logic app, or I'm sorry, one from the copy data, and the other for the store procedure. Now that you have it wired up where you're, it's correct in your pipeline, now I'm going to show you one of the more difficult pieces, which was how you actually pass that information from your logic app into your pipeline. So if we go here, I'll show you how to do that. So let's go over here and do a new step. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose a data factory. You're going to choose create a pipeline. So you're going to fill in your subscription, your resource group, your data factory pipeline. And then you're going to come here and you're going to see two things. You're going to see reference a pipeline run ID or parameters. And this is somewhat confusing. Because if I click on parameters, it just adds one, I'll call it, data position, right? It's one box. And you think to yourself, OK, I have two parameters. Or in other pipelines I'll show you, I have more. Uh, how do I pass them? And this is what's confusing. Because you would think, oh, I'll put the name of one of the parameters. Then I'll go to add new parameter. And lo and behold, you can't put another parameters because this is expecting an actual JSON structured document with all of your information. And this is what took me some time to figure out. And here's how you do it. You start with an open curly brace. Then in whatever order you want, you put your parameter names. So in this case, we'll put file name and it's gotta be spelled exact. So it's, quote, the name of your parameter 
end quote, then a colon, then a quote, and then the information. Now, the really cool thing about this is I know that in here, oh, there's only five, okay. <laughs> Let me go up one. Oh, no, here it is. So when a file is created, I can get the display file name. So if I click this and then end quote, like this, now it's going to pass the name of the file that comes from the dynamic content into the parameter. I have, and then I put a comma. Now I'm expecting the next one, which is base ID, colon. Now this I already know because I know the, the line, and this one is two. And then close. Now, if you don't do this right and you try to click off of it, it'll yell at you when you try to save it, right? It'll tell you failed and basically invalid JSON. So you have to make sure to close curly brace. And that's basically it. Now, when this pipeline runs, it will pass in the name of the file that's been properly adjusted and then a specific piece of information. When that pipeline runs, it'll pass this in. And you could have any number of them, just basically, comma, name of your parameter, colon quote. Now, you may be thinking, wait, base ID is an integer. It is, but I always pass them with quotes. I think quotes are okay. Um, actually, you may even be able to do this. Normally, I make all of my parameters strings, and that way I just do this all the time. Um, so that you'll have to test. Uh, you may be able to get away with it just doing that because base ID is an integer. But either way, this is how you do it. Hopefully this has been informative. Uh, please like, subscribe. I'll do more if there are specific things within uh, Azure that you'd like to see that I'm familiar with. I'd be happy to do a video and let everyone know. Thanks again.